Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Assassin's Creed 2. I'm Kenny. And I'm Andrew. And we're going to be playing this. I have never played this game before. I know you haven't, and Assassin's Creed is one of my favorite game series of all time. So we're jumping in. Yeah, I'm trying to turn his mind around. He never cared for the series. Um, yeah. Alright, this is embarrassing. But, like, every time... Actually, you know what? Just pick a name for the pile. I'm not going to name it Ezio like uh, I always do. Trunch Gup. Trunch Gup, so is that... No, tea? actually, Trunch Guppy. Trunch Guppy. Trunch Gup E. I love it. Trunch Guppy. Now, they won't call him Trunch Guppy in the game. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> Be like, it is the feared assassin, Trunch Guppy. Where is the... Subtitles! We don't need subtitles. We don't need no stinking subtitles. Yes, we do. Because we're going to be talking through cutscenes. Let's face it. Who needs information? All right. Well, do you, you've played the first one, right? Yeah. Did you ever finish it? Yeah. Okay. Are you lying to me? No, you kill the Templar dude, and then it turns out you're in modern day. And... Yeah. Spoiler alert, by the way. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it takes all place to the future, and you're actually reliving the past. Yeah. Basically, Abstergo is uh, Templars, and they wanted the piece of Eden. They wanted to help. They wanted you to relive... Altair's memory to find the piece of Eden. You go through it, yada yada. Turns out Amulim, the leader of the assassins, is crazy. You have to get the apple back from him as Altair. The apple? And the apple of Eden. Oh. And then you, uh... What if you bring back an orange? An orange? The orange of Eden? Yeah. Um, it apple. would not be biblical. Actually, who's to say that the Tree of Life was a fucking apple anyways? Well, actually, oranges were called Chinese apples. For really? the majority of human history. And how do you know this information? Because I care, and I also watch Vsauce. That too. Uh, shout uh, out, shout out to Vsauce. Dust. Vsauce is a great channel. Wait. No, Kristen Bell plays fucking... What's her name? I don't like the, the modern day guy is just a dude in a white hoodie. Like, I mean, I he guess that they're... He's, he's your everyman. I get that they're harking back to the fact that the assassins wear white robes. Yeah, but like... Well, master yeah. assassins don't. And actually, they stopped wearing white robes after four. Uh, and actually, Ezio... All right, continuation. You find this at the end. Yeah. The bleeding... There's something called... Spoiler alert. Something called the bleeding effect, which being in the Animus too long gives you basically an assassin's training. Or, also known as the bleeding effect, oh, when, you, when you cut yourself, you bleed. Yeah, that too. All right, so... Uh, that What year was this made? This was made in 2007? No, it couldn't have been. 2000, That's too early. 2009. That's too late. 2009, I think. 9 or 10. Yeah. She's like, no, I just murdered somebody. It's cool. I'm on my period. It's okay. <laughs> I bleed out my gut chest. <laughs> I got the, the chest vagina. I think that's how that works. <laughs> His name is Desmond. Desmond Miles. Oh, what a lame name. Well, how is that lame? Desmond. You know that's Nolan North, right? Sure, cool. You don't know who Nolan North is? Yeah, he does a lot of stuff. He does fucking Uncharted... Yeah. This, uh... Remind me to care sometime. Oh, you make me sad. Alright. Listen, the only voice actors I care about are Clancy Brown. Who? That's Clancy Brown. That's Mr. Krabs. <laughs> <laughs> Has he been anything that I know? Yes. Hi Highlander. He was the villain in Highlander. The Kurgan. You know, I've never seen Highlander, right? What? I know, it's amazing. Oh, it hurts my soul. Alright, anyway, um... Clancy Brown and Michael Ironsides, ironically, both were Highlander villains. Michael Ironsides is fucking... Sam Fisher. Thank you. I was trying to remember his name. Uh, both were Highlander villains, ironically. I didn't actually even think about this. Oh, villain. by the way, this game opens with childbirth. <laughs> and some 2010 cleavage that's done very poorly. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, I'll take it, I guess. I mean, but... you do what you gotta do. <laughs> Not my proudest fap. <laughs> now... Before we continue, you you know how like all right the the explanation is the animus runs off of a puppeteering system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you actually move the baby. What? You move the baby. So you're the baby in the scene. You are the baby in this scene. That is Giovanni this Autore. Start, this game starts out as a bloody baby. That's okay. That, that, that point towards this game. <laughs> game. Game one me zero. Yeah. <laughs> you are an Autore. You are a fighter. So fight. God, I love. It. All right, so press, press A to move, a your, legs. move your legs like a little, like a little fucking baby. Empty hands, your armed hand, which you don't have a weapon if you yeah. do as a baby, and move your head, and then you start crying. So why is this QTE baby time? I don't know. Don't they just smack a baby on the ass to make it cry? Yeah, usually. or is that a myth? No, you usually do. Okay, I don't remember how it smacked on the ass. And there we go. We are introduced to baby assassin Ezio. 
I kind of wanted to come out wearing a full hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> the umbilical cord is like shaped as a hoodie. He's like, Aah. he uses it like a fucking flail. He's got the placenta. <laughs> He's got the placenta on the end of it. Uh, yeah, that's gross. <laughs> Things that make you go <laughs> on this episode. Uh, uh, quote Ron White. And what quote Ron one? Ron White. That, oh, that Ron was the thing he did. He's like, Things that make you go boom. It's been a while since I've listened to any Ron White comedy. Yeah. Checkpoint Reach. Move like a robot. Got that. These 2010 graphics do kind of hurt me a little. I know, and the fact that they're you know what I like. Love- what yeah, I love about graphics is that, like, at the time, like, this, I'm sure this scene was super real. Oh, yeah. And then, like, the, even, like, the N64, I remember thinking the N64 looks super real. Like, But then, you, and that's the thing, it's like, going back to the N64 after playing these types of games. Yeah, and you want to just like, up. I know. <laughs> but, simply, it's nostalgic looking, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Speak, this isn't that bad. So, you know what, you know the GameCube... Wind Waker. Yeah, yeah. And, it uh, looks terrible compared to the HD. I know. It's like, it. the HD version, someone described it, it looks how you remember it looking. Right? That is perfect. I won't That is the that. best description of that. Okay. Sure. Have a little so, seizure. So, all right. Let me, let me catch up on some plot here. Yes, go ahead. So, I'm all means. So you, in the last one, you get up out of bed and you find the cool thing. And then suddenly, this one starts off with, there's a person you know. She was actually in the first one. Was she? She uh, was the technician that put you in the animus every time, every uh, day. Yeah, that was the thing. She helped you and now discover memories. Now she's a murderer. Yes. And you're running. And, and uh, I can't run. Fuck. And you're being careful. I know. That's what you're doing. There's actually no sneaking mechanic in this game. The sneaking mechanic was introduced in Unity. Yeah, the, I mean, but that's how the other one was. Yeah. I mean, I'm... No, not at all. The, the first one? First you one? had a walk and sprint. You could, and yeah, then yeah, you had, yeah. you had yeah, walk, I'm, run, and sprint. But I'm saying that, yeah, there was not a sneak mechanic. Yeah, alright, yeah. W- which I do and don't like. Same thing with the, uh, the new Far Cry Primal. Like, it's very difficult to be... Well, like, yes, you can crouch, but you don't need to. Like, people yeah. don't see you until you're already murdering them. It's just like, Bleh. not. Uh, I don't know about you, I get to spot it all the time. That first oh, I know. real, like, base that you have to invade, I guess you could call it a base in Cam Mendes. But, um, yeah, be careful. Well, look at that tall ass. It's not that great. <laughs> yeah, not, not, in 2010, it was fantastic. I still like more me, though. Uh, I know. This is more of uh, James's type of girl. Yeah, no joke. Stick thin. I could be, I <laughs> the could fuck be, up. I could be a supermodel, right? right? Yeah. yeah. They and wouldn't tell me I need to lose weight. But basically, she at the end of the last game, she revealed that she is an assassin. Oh. She had the, the ring finger cut off and all that stuff. Oh, um, that's that's attractive. Missing fingers. Yeah, I know. To all y'all so who are missing fingers. She, mm. she was ready to give herself the shocker, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> anyway, she reveals that she is an assassin and she's going to help you. And this is the continuation of that. She breaks you out of Abstergo. Mm. What has Kirsten Bell been in? Like, I know the name. I don't. But I don't know who she is. She's that girl. No, shit. I bet whoever she is, she feels like a plastic bag. Floating in the wind. wind. Wanting to start again? Yeah. That floppy pussy floating in the wind. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that took a turn. A yes. hard turn. <laughs> We're driving. Dri- Left! <laughs> and now you actually get to fight. Uh, for once. Go, hoodie guy. And I actually don't have a blaze, so I'm just punching them, and they're just punching me. Oh, God! <laughs> yeah, okay, this is realistic. Yeah, totally. I don't care who you are. The fact that, like, they all wait to attack you. Oh, God! Where's Batman? <laughs> I was gonna say Batman had better fight him again. Fuck! This does. This feels very Batmanish. Oh, it's nothing. The I mean, I I know it's nothing like it, but it, like watching it. Feels oh, like what it. the fact that there's a bunch of people around yeah, it's you. It's like a bunch of dudes. You're throwing punches. You're trying to be cool, I guess. Let Let's face it, Batman. I just swung at the air and that guy fell. Yeah, haven't you seen any action movie? I've seen some really bad editing in action movies. What was it? There was a. Watch Mojo did a thing of like top ten. Uh, watch Mojo. That's how you say it. Well, I say Watch it? Mojo. What What did I say? You said Watch Mojo. You accidented the Joe. Whatever. Anyway, Watch Mojo. Yeah, uh, did, did a thing where it was uh, like the top ten like failed fight scenes or something like mm-hmm. that, and they did that. They pointed out, and it's like in all these movies that I love, it's like oh, I never. Noticed that he didn't actually punch that guy. He just yeah. went flying. Yeah. Your brain goes by so fast you don't even realize it. Uh, speaking of action movies, I was thinking of this. It was on a Watch Mojo video, too. What's that movie with Clint Eastwood where he fires a bullet at a RPG and it explodes? 
I have not seen that movie. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I, I, it's like the final fight scene. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Great. Getting shoved in a trunk. How does she? That's a turn off. Some people, Desmond. What? How does she clean her shirt? I don't. That, you know what? That's interesting. Maybe she changed it in the car. That's why she put you in the trunk so you wouldn't see those luscious titties. Luscious no. being flat as a board. Let, let me. Uh, not that bad. Nah, they're, they're better than your butt. But yeah. still, I don't know. In a life or death situation, I don't feel like that should take precedence. What changing your shirt in the car? Well, no, but like not like being afraid to show people like your genitalia. The yeah. Uh, the fact that she walks so slow at this spot. Right. Uh, video games and realism. Gross. Fuck realism. They actually introduced. We are at ten minutes in this episode. I'm, I'm gonna get to a spot where I'm in control, like physically, and dialogue has ceased, and I'll stop the episode. We're getting there. Leading effect. Also known as that time of the month. Yeah. I, I mean, I think they could have come up with a better name than the bleeding effect. Well, it. it all right. It, it, information, you know, information bleeding over. They could have caused the osmo osmosis effect, I guess. But the bleeding effect sounds more like badass, I guess. Yeah. They, they could have called it, like, Ancestral Recall or something like that. Ancestral Recall actually sounds really cool. I mean, it's it's a magic card and a Hearthstone card. What does Ancestral sure Recall do? Uh, I don't, I don't know what it does in magic, actually. I, let me... To the phone! To the phone! Quick, entertain them. Just a little bit surprised. I really, I, I, you know, I don't actually really care if they can hear the audio. You know, look at how weird it looks in like the preview. Like it looks like fuzzy. Well, and it's bugging me. Oh, cool beans! All right, so search up ancestral. Ancestral. I think it's a magic card. If it's not, I'm gonna feel real bad. Yeah, you failure. I know it's a Hearthstone card. We're gonna pause here. Oh, it is a magic card. It is a magic card. What's it do? Target player draws three cards for one blue. It is worth seven thousand five hundred dollars. What? Why? What are you... I guess to draw three for one. Draw three for one? Are you kidding me? Yes, that's worth seven thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> this is the wrong show to be doing this in discussing <laughs> magic cards. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, that's gonna be it for this episode. See y'all in the next episode. All right, thank you.